What is going on guys, Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den and in this video we're going to be covering some major tips that need to be corrected if you're trying to take your deadlift to the highest potential possible. And of course if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe because if you don't I'm going to come and find you and cut your nose off. So I'm actually putting this video together because at the Lion's Den, which is the gym I own located in Colmar, PA, uh, we had a lot of our athletes test in the compound lift. So the bench, squat, deadlift, overhead press, just to see where everybody's numbers are after a tough 20 week long training cycle. And to be honest with you, everybody did fantastic. Lots, I would I'd probably say over 98% of the people all PR'd, uh, but if they didn't PR, they're making a lot of other gains and other aspects of their training, whether it's their nutrition, just uh, overall well-being, uh, maybe it was technique wise. So everybody had improved which is a coach that means a lot to me. But I wanted to put this video together uh, for my athletes at the gym and you guys at home because I found that a lot of the mistakes that were made, uh, probably you guys could learn from too. And obviously I'm a little biased because I love the deadlift. Uh, and that's why I'm starting off with the deadlift. But I'm gonna do this for the squat and the bench as well and probably the overhead press and also link some other videos I've made in the past that I think can bring you guys some value. All right, so before we get to the actual technical principles that I'm gonna cover, there were just a few things that I'm gonna rattle off that I think would make a difference in my athletes' uh, progress and hopefully some of your guys at home. So the first thing first is shoes, all right? When it comes to shoes, guys, we wanna make sure that we have a very flat surface to pull from, okay? So what I mean by that is if you're wearing running shoes, or shoes without a cushion, it's going to have uh, the ability to move your foot in a position that probably isn't going to be as efficient as possible when pulling. So I always suggest to wear some sort of flat shoe. We don't wanna have a huge heel or a lot of cushion in the shoe. Uh, so typical shoes that people wear are gonna be like Nike Metcons, Reebok Nanos, uh, they're gonna wear Chuck Taylors, maybe Vans, just something that has a nice flat bottom so that you can evenly push away with the whole part of your foot uh, and you're staying on a nice flat surface. I used to deadlift barefoot all the time, so some people like that, but that's just a really simple way. If you don't have the shoes uh, at the time, just take your shoes off and deadlift in your socks, okay? It's gonna be better than if you were wearing a running shoe, but changing up the footwear could play a role in having a more efficient pull. Next one, I've covered a lot of videos on belts and why we should wear belts, but I'm gonna put the video right up here. Uh, if you are trying to pull the heaviest deadlift possible, okay, I, at minimal uh, requirement, would say that a belt is going to help you out in that realm. So buy a belt if you can. There's tons of different belt options out there. I love Pioneer, uh, but you guys figure out what you like. Uh, but belts are great. Watch the video above on belts and get yourself a lifting belt if you are gonna be in the lifting game for some time. All right, so the first tip uh, actually has to do with grip, okay? So some of the athletes I saw when they were testing were using a double overhand grip, but they weren't hook gripping the bar. We do not want our grip to be our limiting factor in our pull. Now, if we go with that grip, a double overhand grip, and we're not hook gripping, that's gonna be the weakest grip. And as you guys start to pull, your hands are gonna give out, or it's just gonna start rolling out of your hand, and you're gonna drop the bar. So. If you choose to do the double overhand grip, which is completely fine, try to invest in the hook grip. So with the hook grip, we basically are just gonna wrap our thumbs around the bar, and then we're going to close our fingers over top of our thumbs, and that's gonna lock the bar in to a much more secure uh, grip when we're pulling. Now, if you don't wanna do a double overhand grip, there's the mixed grip, okay? So I did a mixed grip for a long period of time. That's just gonna be one hand over, one hand under the bar. You can pick what feels more comfortable. If you wanna go right over or left over, totally up to you guys. Uh, but that is going to be another option in terms of grip that is gonna be way more efficient than just a typical double overhand grip. So that's what I recommend. Uh, the last option is just gonna be, if you wanna keep it simple, strap up, okay? Uh, there's no reason why you you know shouldn't strap or can't strap unless you know you're powerlifting in some organization that doesn't allow it. But if you're just a recreational lifter, you know using straps is completely fine. If you have the the goal of getting better grip strength in general, uh, obviously try to have some training days where you're not using straps. But if it ain't against the law or whatever you're doing in your life, more power to you. All right, guys. So tip number two has to deal with the setup. So something I was seeing pretty commonly. Uh, at the lion's den with some of the athletes was when they would get in their setup and they were about to pull, their knees would shift forward, okay? Or they may even have started in this position with their knees forward over the bar. 
Is it wrong? Is it right? I don't know. But what I'm going to tell you is it's probably not the most efficient for going for a max rep. So basically to correct this, what I would do is walk up to the bar. And when I look down at the bar, the bar should be cutting my foot directly in half. Okay. From there, what I'm going to do is actually round over, put my hands on the bar, and I'm going to bring my body to the bar, not the bar to my body. From there, we want to make sure that we get nice and tight in that position. Our shins are probably going to be more vertical and our knees aren't typically going to be traveling forward over the bar. Okay. We want to get nice and tight and pull from that position. Moving on to the next tip, and that has to deal with the bar traveling away from our body as we pull, okay? We want that bar to be in contact with our body the entire way up. Fastest way from point A to point B is going to be a straight line. And the further that bar drifts away from our body and center mass, the harder and heavier that deadlift is going to be and feel. So basically to just keep this very simple, whenever you are deadlifting, the bar should be grazing your body the entire way up. Now we do not wanna be doing this to the point where our shins are exploding and blood is squirting out. It looks like some scene from, I don't know, Rambo or some crazy war movie. We don't want that at all, um, but we do want to keep that bar nice and snug to our body. Sometimes people wear deadlift socks, which is why they're preventing their shins from being scraped. Other people I've seen in the gym uh, wear some sort of knee sleeve or they just roll their knee sleeve down just so that they can pull up their shin, but they're usually doing this just to make sure that they're keeping contact with their uh, body and bar the whole time to keep that pull nice and smooth. So constantly being aware uh, with your body that the bar is touching you the entire time is just something that you want to start ingraining in yourself. All right, guys, so as, as I'm getting in this setup, okay, I want to bring my body to the bar. Okay, you can see my shins are pretty vertical here. And as I come up, that bar is staying in contact with my body the whole way up and down. So I come up. just like so. So it comes up and it kind of traces on the way down. And you can even see on my shin, right? Kind of rubbing it a little bit. So, you know, that will happen. Um, but at the same time, what we don't want is the bar to be away from us. So what that looks like is when I go to pull, the bar isn't in contact with me. It's gonna make it way harder. Doesn't look like much with 135, but if you're going for a max effort, we really want that bar to be as tight to our body as possible. The further away it is, it's gonna recruit a lot more muscles, and it's also going to really make us round that upper back and kind of pull us out of position. Now this other tip, listen, we've said it a million times. I could say it every day, but someone's still gonna do it. And that's why it's on this video right now. Do not jerk the bar off the ground. Okay. We want to make sure that when we are in our setup, we're as tight as possible. We've built up a ton of tension and we break the bar off the floor nice and smoothly. If we build up all this tension, right? And, and we, we have a nice big belly breath. And then right before we go to pull, we just jerk the bar off the ground. We basically are just destroying everything that we've just built. All right, guys. So to fix the issue of jerking the bar off the ground, basically in the cover, two uh, little pointers here. First one is when you're in your setup here, just focus on flexing your triceps, okay? Because if your triceps are flexed, you literally have to loosen them and then go back to that. So if you flex them and don't move them the whole time, all you have to do is just stand straight up like so. Nice smooth pull. The other thing is gonna be building up so much tension that there is no slack in the bar. So if you hear this, we call that slack. So there's basically room between the plate and the collar of the barbell. So to take that out, you're gonna get super tight, flexing my triceps, building up tension. You can hear all of a sudden the, the collar meets the plate right there. That means the tension is now out and it can be a nice smooth pull as long as we don't go back down or loosen up. So we stay really tight. All we have to do from here is just push away from the floor and finish the, the movement. There we go, we have a deadlift. So real quick, get set super tight you can almost feel like your hands are heavy okay before i break the bar off the ground my hands feel the weight of the bar first and then i go through just like that so that's a nice smooth pull uh, without 
slack in the bar. To be honest with you, I don't know anything good that can come out of just jerking the bar violently off of the ground. Any great puller for the most part, I think 99% of most pullers do not jerk the bar, okay? So there's something to be said with that. So that's pretty much uh, some of the main things that I wanted to discuss in this video is I've put out a lot of deadlift content because I've been really working hard to improve my deadlift over the last several years. So if you just type in my name, Joey Zatmary Deadlift, you're going to get a plethora of videos with tons of tips. I don't know about tricks, but hopefully they'll help you guys with your deadlift. So if you learned something, subscribe, give the video a like, comment down below, maybe some other things that have really helped you out. Um, to my lions and athletes, I'm very proud of each and every one of you. Hopefully you guys watch this video and you can take these pointers and throw them in with your training so that when we test in the next couple uh, months, we're gonna see a big improvement uh, just made by some small little uh, tips there. So. That's all I had for you guys. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, subscribe, share the video with your mom, your sister, your aunt, maybe the tortoise in the swamp down the street. Who knows? The world's getting crazy out there, folks, but I will say this. It's better to be jacked and strong in a crazy world than not. Am I right? All right, peace, guys. Nailed it. Nailed that one. Only took about 30 takes, Johnny boy.